Hello, hello, beautiful people. I came back to make an extended version of the last video, which is about Terrell Rhodes and his newest court date, which was today, June 1st, 2001, and what actually took place during court today. There is no footage in this video. These are just the court records where you can read the charges, uh, the schedule, and things like that. I suggest looking up the charges or the names of some of the things that you won't understand if uh, you're not really familiar with court records. But let's get into this. So, of course, we all know about the collection of charges he's racked up, but we'll just look at it really quickly here. There are a total of 11 charges, all felonies. And it's really weird because we know about the murder, first degree. Rest in peace, Amari. Poor baby. We know about that. We know that allegedly he grabbed the officer's gun. But maybe it was a taser. Or maybe it was tear gas looking at these charges. Two and three. Attempted murder with the use of a deadly weapon or tear gas. Two of those. And then there are four charges for assault on protected person with use of deadly weapon. So those are two different scenarios. Two different charges for sure. It'll all come out in the wash in court, but pretty deep. And then we have four charges of resisting a public officer with firearm. So, wow. Oh, that's murky. Anyway, 11 felonies. So the next page is the list of dispositions. Um, basically, the charges, again, there's 11 of them. And as you can see, they are all listed as dismissed grand jury. That's really what this video is more so about, the explanation of that. The case is not dismiss dismissed, excuse me. None of these charges are dismissed, okay? All right, next page. Original track assignment, Justice Court 12. And this basically is just an overview of everybody and everything kind of moving around with this case. Um, it shows you that there is media request for electronic coverage. A lot of that is coming from uh, the media outlets, as you can see, Las Vegas Review Journal, Telemundo, KLAS. Everybody wants to know what's going on, so that's what you see here. Okay, just more of the disposition. Um, going back to the initial appearance that was completed, counsel was appointed. Uh, there was zero dollars bail, and um. Filed under seal was the DVD of the interrogation room. Legal review, more um, requests for electronic coverage, the huge. Okay, here we are at the meat and potatoes of it all. And this you can connect to the video just before this one. Um, I didn't want to delete it and do all that, so... Um, Basically, this is where I started, and I was explaining the grand jury portion, but let's look at this really quickly. Um, 8 o'clock a.m. was the time the result, the matter was heard. There was a request for electronic coverage by Telemundo, which means maybe there's some coverage over there. Remote appearance by the defense counsel, defendant not transported. Defendant refused transportation to court. I have never heard of such a thing. Makes my little, you know, gadget ears kind of go up. <laughs> I'm telling my age. But it just doesn't sound right. He, he refused to go to court and, and that was okay. I don't know. But that's what happened. Now, case closed. Dismissed. Grand jury. Judgment entered. Release order. Court ordered due to dismissal. Counts 1 through 11. Okay. Dismissed. Grand jury judgment entered. Means that 
it's going to the grand jury, basically. It's only been dismissed from one portion of the courts. It is not closed. It is not over. Now the grand jury can subpoena people, and we just need to pile on all the actual factuals that we can, or they can, so that we can prove that the criminal allegations should be as they are. That's basically, in a nutshell, the grand jury's job. Um, and they're going to do it, and I think they're going to do it well. A lot of things can come out of this because now you've got people being subpoenaed. Maybe there was a friend, a neighbor, a family member, somebody who knows something that's just not talking. Well, if they get subpoenaed, they'd have to. So, again, this is basically what's going on. He did not appear in court today. It says that he refused transportation. However, his attorney did appear virtually, and the case was closed in Clark County and dismissed for a grand jury. Okay, just a little lucky charm here at the end. A little more info. Why prosecutors choose grand juries instead of preliminary hearings? This is a really good short and sweet article by Sarah J. Berman. The grand jury process is prosecutor friendly in that the grand jurors see and hear only what prosecutors put before them. Unlike a preliminary hearing held in court with the defense side present, the grand jury does not make its decision in the context of an adversary proceeding. Rather, grand jurors see and hear only what prosecutors put before them. Prosecutors technically have an obligation to present exculpatory evidence or evidence that suggests that a defendant might not be guilty, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt, that whole thing. Um, though there is not much other than the prosecutor's conscience to enforce this rule. So basically... For them to be taking Terrell to the grand jury, it's so they can go ahead and lock it all in, if you ask me. Lock it all in, stick it to him, not, don't really go through a trial and having to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, they will have to bring their evidence and, you know, that sort of thing. But they don't have to do nearly as much as they would have to to get him, hopefully, a guilty verdict if it had to go to uh, an actual trial. A hearing. This is why prosecutors choose grand juries instead of preliminary hearings. Again, again, again. Rest in peace, Amari. This is all for you. Justice for Amari.